Hi, welcome to this edition of Florida's Event Hero, sponsored by the Florida Festivals and Events Association. I am Laura Rivas, Special Events and Talent Coordinator for the City of West Palm Beach, and with me today is Don Reed Beal, the Event Director for Winterfest Inc., home of the Seminole Hard Rock Winterfest Boat Parade, which marks its 50th anniversary this year. Don is a Florida native, born and raised in Fort Lauderdale. She's married to George, and she has three sons who have grown up with all things Winterfest. And this is Don's 28th boat parade. Congratulations, Don. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You are so welcome. Let's dive right in and find out why you are this week's Florida event hero. My partner in the series, Kristen Hicks from the Riviera Beach CRA, and I have been starting these interviews with how blessed we feel to live in Florida where events were able to start back up again much sooner than other parts of the country during the pandemic. Do you feel that being based in Fort Lauderdale or maybe just in Florida in general helped you get back to live events faster or maybe slower than other parts of the state or country? Oh my gosh, I think you're so fortunate to be in South Florida. Um, while we did not do our traditional events in 2020, we were fall of 2020, um, we still managed to be creative and adapt. Um, so we were still keeping relevant while not doing our traditional events, but full steam ahead for 2021, celebrating, as you mentioned, 50 years. That is incredible, 50 years. I mean, it is such a fantastic event and so cool. There's, you know, so many parts of the country that can't do a boat parade. So you definitely have something special down there in Fort Lauderdale. Could you tell our audience what the most unique thing uh, you did at Winterfest or are doing now maybe this fall to make your event successful and stay relevant during the pandemic? Well, we did manage to decorate a single boat. Um, so we did that for the month of December and our theme, we still went with a theme in 2020, home for the holidays. How appropriate was that? So we did collateral pieces. We were able to really maintain um, some sponsorship levels and everything we did was campaign driven. So while the live events weren't happening, we created um, story time with Santa that was sponsored by a local hospital. It was a Zoom uh, recorded event. And for the first hundred people registering, they got a beautiful, it was the night before Christmas book mailed to them for free, compliments of another partner. Um, we did letters to Santa, a mailbox campaign with another one of the hospital districts. And we had 13 mailboxes throughout Broward County and they could go in and see, we did Santa sightings there. So Santa would come in with his little bag, picking up the letters. We had elves um, doing that as well. And the when they dropped their letter, they could scan a little QR code and there was a message from Santa. Um, so great fun with that. And then a little quiet pay it forward with that. You wonder what you're going to do with those letters. And, you know, we didn't want them just to be lost. So we um, quietly put them in the mailboxes at Macy's. So uh, Macy's was going to donate $1 to make a wish for every letter they received up to uh, um, $2 million. So we participated with that quietly. And um, we have another program that's a junior captain program. And Make-A-Wish had nominated our 2019 junior captain. So it just kind of felt full circle and um, a feel good for all of that. Um, we also worked with, so our Santa sightings kind of took off. We were talking to our uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau and telling them what we were thinking of doing. Well, they loved it so much, they got behind it. We did a full day video shoot. Um, with Santa and some of our other partners. He was driving a, a Ford convertible. So we got that in there and some different stops along the way at Hard Rock. And um, this video was produced by them and it ended up coming out to a 60 second video that was used by the CVB to come to Florida. So it'll be used this year as well. Some had masks, some didn't. So we, we thought about it in advance so we could use it for the long term. Um, what else did we do? We did a throwback Thursday. So zero cost to us. We were doing it and we had a sponsor um, brought to you by. So every day when we did that, um, so we just kept relevant with our sponsors and gave them opportunities to still get recognition. We have a one hour television show with our local Fox affiliate. 
WSVN. So we did that still, and it made it um, a 49 year retrospective leading up to our 50th this year. So we were able to adapt quite well, and we're keeping story time with Santa, we're keeping the mailbox program, and we're going to expand on all of those um, this year and beyond. And we're going to actually touch on that in a, in a bit here on some things that maybe you did that you're going to keep forward. But uh, what I heard that was really cool from what you just said was your silent pay it forward. That was an incredible outcome of you know something that wasn't so great that turned into something great. And then um, a lot of people I know have been really interested in the sponsorship aspect and how different organizations were able to retain their sponsors, stay relevant, and offer their sponsors opportunities that um, could still work when the crowds just weren't coming out. So you've got a lot of great, unique stories that you were able to share with the um, with the group here. Thank you so much. Um, on the you know planning side, this pandemic did force all of our planners to re-examine their entire rule book for how effective events are produced. Um, what one new idea that your team came up with and implemented can you share with the FFEA community members as a best practice going forward? Yeah, that was an interesting thing. We did work at home for two months um, in the very beginning when everything shut down, but uh, being in the state of Florida, when we opened in phase one, and I'm in Broward County, so we were a little bit later because we were hot spots, but we came back to our office in May, so we were working from home. You know, I thought it would be a little more get stuff done at home. Well, we were busy. Um, a lot of well checks on our sponsors were very relationship driven. We have a lot of long term sponsors. So we were just taking time to do some well checks and touch and base with everybody just saying hi not discussing sponsorship because nobody knew, you know, we all thought, hey, this is gonna be over in a month. Okay. Um, so we um, came back to the office and we're just kind of waiting it out. We worked on all our our decks and just did stuff that we would normally do again, not knowing we would not be able to do the parade. We were thinking, ah, oh, we're fourth quarter. By then, maybe we'll be one of the lucky ones and we'll be able to move on. So we had spent time discussing capacity and event capacity at all our venues. And we were below that 50%. So we were still thinking, hey, we can do this. Um, you know, our title sponsor is um, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Um, we're in a multi-year contract. Um, that was actually, they were the, the reason that we decided in August. So we waited until August that the optics just weren't right. They had 1,700 employees out of work at the time and it just didn't feel right to be celebrating. And we, we got beat up a little bit that it was an early call um, but at the end of the day, obviously, it was the right call. Nobody knew that, how right it was. Um, and, you know, locally, the big boat show did happen just before us, and that went on. Um, so then we, every time the boat show was mentioned, we were mentioned that we canceled. Um, but keeping us relevant and alive, you know, people missed us. We've been around for so long, and we're a South Florida holiday tradition. So, we had the best year in history in 2019, and it's our 50th this year. So I guess if you had to have bookends in a pandemic year, we're, we're okay. We, we stayed relevant and uh, continued on. So best practices, I don't know. I think it allowed all of us to step back and reevaluate things. You know, we all do things and we say we're not in love with something, maybe it's a partner, maybe it's a media partner, maybe it's something we want to change and you end up falling right back into it because time gets away from you. We stepped back and we reevaluated and we left some relationships that we didn't feel we were getting what we wanted out of them by way of media. So I think, you know, that was the best practice learned that we we were able to take a step back. That was a silver lining. So we're moving forward in a little different direction, but the ones that we stepped away from are coming back in a different way, wanting us to partner with them, um, but not holding us hostage per se, like we felt um, the years prior. So I feel like that's a, a best practice that we all got our houses in order and had a little time to, to reevaluate wholly. Which, I mean, that is an excellent point, but something you said at the beginning that uh, I think other people may pick up on is the fact that 
you did a lot of well checks. You weren't talking about sponsors. You weren't talking about money. You were just talking about human being. You were reaching out, connecting to people, which is something that probably a lot of us uh, in general over the years with the fast pace of what we do forget about sometimes. So that might be another best practice that you came up with that you didn't even realize you came up with. Um, I like that a lot. I think that's an important piece for normal. You know, one of the things when I do some sponsor um, forums that I, I create, don't be a fair weather partner. Don't only talk to your partners when it's your time. Right. You know, there's another eight to 10 months out of the year, you should be touching them and seeing what you can do for them year round, not just, you know, when it's your time. So don't be so selfish with it, but, but Absolutely. keep them in mind all year. Very, very excellent point. Um, our next question is a two-parter. Were you able to retain all of your staff throughout the pandemic? And what does your current event portfolio look like, which we've touched on a little bit already. Um, so just going forward, if you can describe, are you only going to produce a live event? Are you going to have some hybrid elements around that? Um, combination of both? So we were, we have a very small staff here. Um, not only were we able to retain our staff and keep you know the relevance and the sponsorship was a big part of that. We are a not-for-profit. Uh, we're a 501c4 organization. So we are 100% reliant on sponsorships. Um, so not only did we keep our staff, we were able to um, enlist and help two interns that were looking for graduation credit. We have an internship program here. So we had two interns for the fall that got their credit and were able to graduate in December um, after finishing with us. So that was very exciting. We were able to social distance and keep it all safe. Um, but status quo in that respect um, by way of staffing, I'm happy to say. Yeah. I'm really excited about the second part. Uh, yes, we are full steam ahead. 50 years celebration, every event intact, full capacity, uh, South Florida, go. Yes. Um, so we're planning. Um, we've got some we did change something up and this was COVID driven. Um, we have a grandstand viewing area um, and we decided in December grandstands probably aren't going to be what people are wanting shoulder to shoulder. Um, although I think that, you know, capacity wise, we could have done it, but it allowed us to move back to a location we started at 20 some years ago. Um, this whole new um, parking garage has been built on the intercoastal in Fort Lauderdale. Um, the area has been a little revitalized. So we're moving to that park um, and it's allowing us to have a new blank canvas. So I am thrilled because nothing better than that of creating a new event, um, modifying, morphing something that we've traditionally done um, and just changing it up a little bit. So I think that will add some excitement for parade viewing. Um, but we are launching um, in October and our you know, main event is the boat parade and that's December 11. So we have about nine events um, surrounding all of that and every one of them is full on. Excellent. And then I'm right up the road from you here in Palm Beach County. So I do go down there a lot when I heard that there's a new parking garage on the intercoastal. I'm like, that's excellent <laughs> because a, a lot of the events when you go to down there are so hard to find parking. And some of them even say, hey, Uber in, there's no parking. That is excellent that you'll be able to utilize that new resource and full steam ahead at full capacity as able um, for the fall and December. Great. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Um, okay. So we want to keep this short and we're going to wrap it up here. Um, so when speaking, you know, candidly, like we have today about the challenger, challenges event planners faced over the past year, um, it can be a little bit overwhelming to look at back at where we were in 2019 compared to where we are now. Um, however, we are optimistic for a bright future in the world of events. And we like to end every discussion on a high note. So we are asking you, Don, to provide some concluding remarks that leave our audience with some hope about the future. Well, you know, it's evident speaking to peers across the country that events are back. People are hungry and thirsty for events. They've missed them. Um, they want them. And, you know, the different fairs that I've uh, been speaking to related to FFEA and then other ones across the country, everybody is selling out. They're selling out early. Some are limited capacity, some are not. Um, so I think there is tremendous hope. Uh, people that are comfortable are vaccinated and they're going to do their thing. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask, whatever the rules are. But 
come out and enjoy. And, and that's the feedback that we're getting and hearing and um, everybody's encouraged and ready to celebrate. And yes, you are certainly promoting that vibe with everything going on with Winterfest down in Fort Lauderdale. Thank you, Don, for the outstanding work you've done for the past 28 years and continue to do at Winterfest and for sharing your story and insights with the FFEA community today. My pleasure. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Florida, Event, Florida Festivals and Events Association, we thank you, our audience, for your time and hope you enjoyed today's discussion. <laughs>